So what I'm doing today is I'm first of all clearing the junk off my desk. Um, and I've got an important job to do today. I noticed yesterday that the snail eggs that I kept have started to hatch. I just kept a few. Um, basically enough to fill my other tank because I've got a spare tank. And they've started to hatch. So I'm going to transfer them into this little Tupperware tub just so it's easy to keep them nice and hydrated and everything. And also if you separate the hatchlings from their siblings it'll stop them munching on their siblings eggs um eggshells so i'm gonna have a look and see if i can find anybody today and have a look and obviously what i'll do is i'll put air holes in the lid I'm just going to have a little careful look. I have got this tub, which they'll go in, but this is a bit big. I want to start them off on something a little bit smaller, if I can. Um, just because when they're little, you don't want them wasting loads of energy trying to find food and stuff. And I've got one. There's one. And it's alive. Oops, there's one. And it's alive. Just seen its little body poking out. So that's how small they start off. So tiny, so small. So let's put you on here. And I found a sibling. And I've been very gentle, and the reason I'm using a spoon is because I can get them out easier without um, causing any trouble squishing the eggs or anything. You have to excuse my shaky hands. I've had a cup of tea and I've had my medication. It makes my hands shake for about an hour. So let's have a look. So there's the remains of an eggshell. And another one. So yeah, so that's just eggshell. And what I'm doing is looking to see if anyone else is hatching. So this egg here, let's see if I can zoom you in. Have a look. Oh, it's no. Obvious sign of hatching there. But that doesn't necessarily mean anything because you can leave them for an extra couple of days to see. So I'll put that there for a bit. Because what I'm doing is taking them out. Right, that's an empty one. I think. Is there someone in there? It's all cracked and crumbled. Well, there's someone in there, but... That one's a fail by the looks of it. Yeah, that one's just a, a broken egg. This one, empty eggshell. So I, th I, th I pretty much think that the ones that are gonna hatch have hatched. This one. It's definitely a, a hole. I'll keep an eye on that one. I think that's empty though. Looks like 
So what I've got to do as well is search through all the soil in case anyone's sort of still in there hanging about. Noticed yesterday one of the other clutch was hatching, which I wasn't expecting. Yeah, I'm finding empty eggshells. So that's an empty eggshell. It's just a little piece of an egg. So I'm going to carry on looking. That one. Looks to be in the process of hatching. So put that to the side. This one's not doing anything. I'm not expecting all of them to hatch. That one's hatching. Those ones aren't doing anything yet. <clears throat> There's a hatchling. Oops. Where did I just drop you? Ah, oh, there you are. So anyone wondering how small they are when they come out? That's a very, very tiny shell there. That's a baby. So I'm being super gentle. I'm trying to keep them the right way up as well. <clears throat> and what I'll do is the other eggs will go back in here for another few weeks. Because um, the other eggs, the reason I wasn't expecting this side to hatch, these were like um, laid about two weeks after the first one, first lot. So I wasn't actually expecting anybody. Okay. So I can safely say I've got everybody. Okay, so I've got everybody out. So what I'm going to do now is prepare my little tub. And the way to check if your soil's right, if you give it a squeeze, it'll clump together like that. But if you throw it up, it starts to crumble. So it's damp, but it's not absolutely saturated. And that's ideal for the snails. Because they need that little bit of moisture, but they don't need it soggy. Yeah. 
And obviously, because these are tiny babies, I don't need like a really deep layer of soil. And I'm just going through, just checking there's no one else in here. And what I'm going to do, zoom you out now, I'll provide the moss on one side like this so they can hide in there. It's pointless putting like obviously a plant pot or anything in because they're tiny, but they can hide under there. And then on this side, I'm going to put the food. So I've got just a piece of lettuce and I've got some carrot. And then I'm going to put a piece of calcium block in. This is like a little calcium biscuit that I made. I'm going to dust it around a little bit because they have a very high calcium requirement when they're tiny because obviously they've got to build their shells. And then these are the little dudes so far. They're approximately a day or two old. When I went, when I looked last night, um, they'd got, um, I could see one shell had cracked and there was one dude out. So they're a maximum of two days old. So hopefully these little fellas will work. Um, what I'll do as well, I'll put some more food in. Because my big snails like that as well. It's like a red cabbage -y stuff. Um, it's red cabbage, lettuce and carrot. And it's a mixed bag. This is, what, this is one of the things I feed my big ones. Obviously with all the other stuff as well, because that would not be nutritious enough for them. So these little fellas need to go in here. And you've got to be like the ultimate in gentle. And I've got these two that are hatching. Stay there. This one. I can't get. I can't pick that one up. So let's show you this one. It's in the process of getting out. So like he's there and he's like bit around to get his shell out. So what I've done is I've cut a hole in the lid so I can put my probe in there so I can monitor temperature and humidity. It's going to take a little minute for the thing to adjust to what's the temperatures in the cage. And what I'm doing now is I'm holding that in position and I'll hot glue it so it's not going to move. And what I like about hot gluing it is later on if I want to put this probe in the other tank and move it, the hot glue will pop off the plastic with a bit of force. So it's not like a permanent thing, I can move it later on. Because I want to monitor the temperature in here. The other tank that they were in has already got like a temperature thing on the back attached to the tank. So I've got this one that I'm putting on here. These are only cheap. Um, I got them online. Um, I think it was. I think it was about six quid for the two. I think. I'd say that the hydrometer thing is not very good, but the temperature seems fine. Like when I've compared it to everything else I measure temperature with, it's been fine. 
just waiting for the glue to cool. And the babies are in here on the, some lettuce. Um, they might not start eating yet um, because they tend to eat the shell of their egg first, um, obviously to reabsorb all the calcium. So they might not be hungry um, at the moment, but it's in there ready for when they want it. And there's plenty of calcium around. There we go. <coughs> and what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to put more calcium in. I've got these little calcium biscuits that I made. This one's a crushed one. It was a skull shape. I've got one on the other side, but what I'm going to do is put extra in because they have a very, very high calcium requirement when they are newborn. And we'll see what happens with these little fellas. And hopefully they'll uh, be fine. I'm just going to put some more moisture in the tub so in here on this side there is I'll show you so sphagnum moss obviously the substrate out the tank sphagnum moss um, lettuce carrot um, some red cabbage because my big ones like that and some calcium. The main thing they're going to want at the minute is the calcium. Um, and then I will put in um, some snail mix. Like this is just for today or the next couple of days. And then I'll put a little bit of snail mix in as well, um, just to give them some food. But they're only tiny, so they're not going to need loads yet. Um, but the main thing is the calcium, a bit of carrot. And these ones are in the process of hatching. And then there's one, two, three, four over there. One, two, three, four. There's five over there that have hatched. So we put them back in now. I've sprayed the moss so that the humidity level will be up a little bit. There's air holes in the top. They're not very big, but there's a little slit in the front I've cut in to let some more air in. And I'll monitor that and see whether I need to put more in or not. The main thing is I want to keep the humidity in at the moment. And then I've got this probe in through the lid with their temperature and humidity gauge. The humidity gauge is not perfect, but the temperature is fine. Um, I find with these the humidity um, is not very it's not very accurate because um, I mean in England it's seventy percent humidity just normally, so it's probably going to be more than that. But obviously I've just took the lid off, so it's reset the thing but the temperature is fine I like to keep the babies at around about 23 so they seem to be fine with that so yeah and obviously I've made this out of a little ice cream tub and the and the, obviously it's because when they're small you don't want them to waste lots of energy searching around a big tank for food so you keep them in quite a small thing to grow them up and then once they're about that big I'll put them in the first tub that I originally had them in to hatch so so yeah, there you go. It's going up now, the humidity. The humidity. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm doing to care for the babies. I'll let you know their progress. Um, obviously, there's no guarantees that it will work because um, they, they can have a high mortality rate, but I'm hoping the conditions are spot on so these ones at least will survive. Um, and I'll keep you updated. Hope you enjoyed this little video. Thanks for watching and bye for now.